you know, we, we felt good about the week. I think, you know, you have your, your rival coming into town and, um, you know, that's always a battle against Michigan on the road, certainly with their place and as well here. So I was excited about our fan support on a Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. I thought that was a big difference for us in that game. And then being able to go on the road at Penn State and, um, you know, come away with the victory. I thought our kids fought pretty hard and were pretty, pretty mentally focused. And I feel good about it as banged up as we were against Michigan. We didn't have Becca Mills. And, um, you know, obviously we started the season as well at Indiana. And she went down six minutes into that game. So basically for two games we didn't have Becca Mills and, um, you know, really needed her against Penn State. And I thought she did a great job. So it was a collective team effort. I think we've, you know, we're starting to make progress offensively. And I see some good things happening as well defensively. So on to the next one, as they say. Questions? Can you talk about how big uh, this past week was for you beating Michigan after their best start in program history and then going on the road to beat Penn State, who's predicted to win the Big Ten? I mean, with all the players that you guys lost from, from last year's squad, it kind of maybe a, a week to show maybe you guys are still contenders for the title? Well, it's awful early. I mean, I, I just think you have to take one game at a time in this league. You can't get ahead of yourself. I mean, we're only three games in. Um, you know, there's a lot of basketball to be played. Um, does it say something? I don't know. I mean, what I did like is I thought our kids came together and I thought we fought really, really hard at both ends of the floor. Um, you know, I think a big part of probably um, a little bit of our success certainly has been a couple of things, but one of them has the, been the play of Kiana Johnson. I mean, I think as a point guard, as a freshman point guard, she kind of plays beyond her years a little bit. Um, she had a tremendous game at Penn State. Um, and then, you know, Taylor Alton has been playing really well for us, too. And, and I think we've had just a nice blend and combination of, you know, kids giving everything they can defensively, if that's kind of their gift. And then offensively, kids that have that ability and skill set are stepping up. So does it say something? I don't know. It's awful, awful early to be, you know, predicting or, you know, worrying about, you know, where we're going to end up in the race. I think, you know, for, for us, it's really right now all about Indiana and getting our focus for Thursday's game. Coach, you talked about Taylor just a little bit. Um, <clears throat> offensively, she was really good Saturday. And then with two minutes left to go in the game, she really cooled off uh, Maggie Lucas, who was on fire. Can you just talk about her play a little bit Saturday and where she's at uh, compared to last year? Yeah, you know, that's a thing about Taylor that I think a lot of people don't see. And if you watch film and study film, I don't know, is it maybe a correlation to how Izzo feels about Austin Thornton maybe? You know, just the little things that don't make stat sheets that they do for your team. Um, you know, Maggie Lucas was unbelievable. And you watch that film and we were in her. I mean, we were switching every screen off of her. Um, I mean, she was hitting them, fading away, falling down in transition in quarter court. She was playing the point. She was playing the two. I mean, we went one time and changed our defense, and somebody else knocked down a three. Um, and that was the one thing we didn't want to happen is everybody else to start to get going to off of her momentum. So to go back to your original question about Taylor is that, you know, no matter what, night in and night out, Taylor Alton's going to play defense. And it doesn't look as good as maybe let's say a Jasmine Thomas or a Satara Washington in the past, because maybe she, you know, isn't, you know, that athletic in, in terms of her quickness and speed and in people, but she's always in position. She always communicates. She works extremely hard um, on that end of the floor. And so, you know, to me, I think, you know, whether if she's hitting her shots, that's even better, you know, because you're getting always defensively something at the other end. and. You know, I'm, I'm proud of her for that because I think she's a big part of what we do and it doesn't always make a stat sheet. You notice it because she went six for nine. You notice it because she went four for seven. You notice it because of her offense, but really defensively, she's kind of a catalyst for us. Susie, how much do you have to beat into the uh, ladies this week uh, playing an Indiana team who you just beat on the road and they've only got five wins on the season, but to kind of keep them focused because you do have a, a big game on the weekend, but not to overlook this one uh, in the midweek. Yeah, I think that's, you know, I think every coach is, is like that, you know, I mean, I, I just, you get to that point where when you win, you worry, when you lose, you worry about the next one, you know, I think, you know, Indiana is um, talented enough, there's no question, I mean, they've got tremendous guard play, and they're huge and athletic, 
and they can do some things, and they play um, a very, very challenging and tough matchup zone. So, you know, for us, you're right. I mean, I think it's about a mentality and, you know, maybe an opportunity for our team to step up and as young as we are to, you know, move forward a little bit and, um, you know, stay focused. And I'm going to challenge them. There's no question about that. I think that's something that, um, you know, needs to be talked about and you can't overlook. Um, you know, we played well and we played well on the road and we're 3-0, and but that doesn't mean anything on Thursday night, you know. It seems like Porsche's kind of developed a little bit of a rhythm and consistency now coming off the bench after struggling with it for a little bit. Uh, do you think that that's a role that she could be, you know, sort of long term kind of finding that as the spot? And what can you talk about the benefit of her in that role being a sort of super scorer, six man off the bench? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think, <clears throat> you know, having her on the floor, she certainly does a lot for our team. You know, on the offensive end, she has a great IQ for the game um, for the most part and really knows how to draw and dish, create her own shot, create a shot for somebody else. Um, a really high IQ that way, we need her on the floor. Um, you know, I mean, whether she starts or doesn't start, she's going to play. And I think, you know, the truth be told, I mean, I think we think defense first here, and I always have. And, you know, it, that's kind of how you win the, you know, the opportunity to get on the floor. If you can defend, you're going to get minutes. And, um, you know, maybe sometimes what we lack offensively, maybe defensively, that's the right matchup. So I always think defense first. And, um, you know, from that perspective, I think, you know, Porsche's greatest gift is the offensive end. She's not a bad defender at all. I mean, I'm not saying that. I just think, you know, in, in relationship to a Jasmine Thomas, for example, you know, I think JT can really lock somebody down and is her quickness and athleticism and plays that side of the ball pretty well. So for me, it's, it's more, it was more that. And then now you can turn it into, you know, she's really done a good job, I think, of watching the flow of the game and understanding what's going on out there before she goes in there. And she can see where the help's coming from defensively so she can create some offense for us. I think she provides a spark off the bench that if she can continue that role is really, really important um, as a role. You know, as you start to get tired and you sub in, you want to be able to elevate your game and not lose anything. And I thought, you know, our bench has done that for us. And that includes Porsche. Right now includes Becca and includes Jasmine Hines, um, AP, KB. You know, those kids, I mean, all those kids are going to play minutes at some point. And, um, you know, Porsche's role is really important to us as a six man. Uh, follow up on that. Who are the, some of the players that you, you feel are really stepping up for you, the, 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 under, the undergraduate, the, the younger players, that maybe have caught you a little bit by surprise? Well, <clears throat> the kid I think has made a big difference for us is Kiana. Now, did she surprise me? No. I mean, she played in a really, really high level. Um, high school program and AAU program. So, I mean, ever since she's been little, she's played in big games. She's played 70, 80 games a year. I mean, she is a competitor and a high IQ for the game. She, her impact hasn't surprised me, but it's, it's exciting. Cause I think, you know, when you can have a point guard that can score the ball, you know, obviously, and, and get north and south at the rim and create shots for other people, that's a critical part um, to your offense. So, um, you know, the development of, you know, Becca, I wish, Be you know, Becca could have been more consistent. A lot of that has just been because she's been, you know, a little bit banged up here in the, in the preseason. But um, I think her and Jasmine have really developed extremely well as freshmen. Um, you know, and the good thing about them is they are not, um, kids that really mentally get too high or too low. You know, for example, I thought Jasmine Hines won the game for us against Michigan. I mean, she really came in and gave us incredible minutes, scored the ball, demanded respect down there, and opened up opportunities for other people. She was tremendous. This next game, you know, in three minutes, she had three fouls and three turnovers. I mean, I don't know if that's statistically possible, but evidently looking at the stat sheet, it was. So, and then after the game, she's fine with it. You know, she kind of gets it, and it's a learning curve for her. And I think Becca's the same way. They never get too self-absorbed. So to answer your question, I think that's been the biggest and, and most refreshing thing is that you have a freshman group of kids that, you know, if they don't perform well, they're going to let it go and move on to the next one, and they're not going to woe is me and feel sorry for themselves and mope around and wonder why they're not playing. They're just going to get out there and practice hard the next day.